Welcome to the Paris Motor Show 2018 and our car collection roundup. Should be fun. We're going by e micro scooter to Porsche. What everyone's talking about on the Porsche stand is Speedster, not actually this one, which is a lovely 356A from the museum, but this one, which is the Speedster concept based on the 991. Now, this is actually the second concept, it's slightly updated, but go back and have a look at our video from Goodwood, where I chatted to Andreas Proninger all about the car, because you'll learn far more. But there are a little, few little tweaks on this car. First thing to say, this is Indian red. I thought it was guards red, but actually it's Indian red, which was first introduced on the 3.2, which is just over there. At the moment, we've still got the central fuel filler there. Whether that'll end up on the final model or not, I don't know. We've also still got these rather lovely wing mirrors, which I, can, I hope they make them in production if they can. They've been slightly tweaked this time. New design of 21 inch wheels. Remember, this is a car that's uh, for the first time, unlike the other cars, they all have 20 inch wheels at the front, 21 inch at the back. This has got 21 inch wheels all the way around. New design, carbon ceramic brakes, although red calipers. Normally you'd expect yellow, but then this is a concept as I say. Also, one final little bit just in there, some new little inserts on the seats. Of course, it's based on GT3, so you've got manual gearbox option and that wonderful 4-litre naturally aspirated 500 brake horsepower engine. Oh, and they're going to produce 1,948 because 1948 and 70 years of Porsche and all that, you get it, which is obviously a lot more than things like the 911R, so that will hopefully keep a few more people happy. Anyway, uh, a couple of other bits on the Porsche stand, so over there. Next up on the Porsche stand, we have the all-new Porsche Macan, which, to be honest, doesn't look very, very new at all, actually, although there are new lights at the back, which are probably the easiest way to spot it. Here it is resplendent in Miami blue. Inside it's slightly easier to see it's different because you've got a much larger infotainment screen or PCM as it's called within Porsche. The big news perhaps is the engines because there's no diesel, no diesel Macan anymore. Uh, you've got a, what is it, a four cylinder petrol to start the range and then you've got a naturally aspirated V6 and then topping the range you've got a turbocharged V6. That last engine is actually related to the one you'll find in an Audi RS4. Anyway, enough this to some more expensive, more historic cars just over there on the Porsche stand. Well, we couldn't leave it without looking at this wonderful display from the museum, starting with 959 at the far end. We've got 996 GT1, which is the most um, sort of numerous, I suppose, of the, the Strasser versions. And actually the only one of the GT1s that I haven't driven. I've driven the 993 and the 98 Evo version. Carrera GT and of course the 918 Spider. I actually ran a poll on my Instagram uh, to see what people would choose. If you'd only choose one, so let me know in the comments below. Currently standing at, by one vote, Carrera GT over GT1. Anyway, next up, uh, I think the Audi stand over there. To my scooter. Whilst there's almost no major news on the Audi stand, there's lots of little bits, starting with this, which is the Audi A1. And we mentioned in a footlock a while ago about these three slats here mimicking the short wheelbase original Quattro. And they've done this, well, the rest of the car to mimic that too, with these lovely white wheels and obviously the red paintwork and even some sort of retro fabric on the seats inside. Having said that, all the layout in there is, well, surprisingly tech heavy for such a small car. So, yeah, I really like the look of this. And I'm hoping they'll still do an S1 version as well because, well, I like the previous one. Uh, moving over this way on the stand, we've got the e-tron that was unveiled in San Francisco. Surprisingly conventional looking, really, for an electric car, which might appeal to people, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether people want their electric cars to look really futuristic or not. We obviously had the retro looking Peugeot, which we've also done a film on elsewhere. So go and check that out after you've watched this. But uh, yeah. Over here, there's something that looks actually sort of like a smaller version of the e-tron really, but is very different. It is the SQ2. So do we really need a slightly sort of jacked up Audi S3? Well, apparently so. Um, looking resplendent in a lovely bright blue. So about 300 brake horsepower from the EA 888 2 liter turbocharged engine, which is the one you'll find in a Golf GTI. Uh, the GT is not actually that bad to drive, surprisingly or not, and you never can tell with Audi. They just, they're so hit and miss really with their performance models that sometimes they get them right, sometimes they don't. So could be a bit of a sleeper, could be quite good. Finally over here, not quite finally, the two more things I'm going to show you. Um, 
neither of which I think I'm probably ever likely to drive. Um, but look at that. That is a new Audi R8 LMS race car. Looks fantastically aggressive and perhaps it's a bit of a new look to the front of the car and you can see on here as well those three slats that we saw on the Audi A1 just over there so perhaps that's a bit more of a design language that's a, you know, a retro nod that we'll see on more Audis in the future but yes this could be the the new face of the new R8 if they're producing a new R8 I don't know finally just over here is the whoop sorry Try not to walk in front of people, you see. People walk in front of me all the time, but I try not to do it to others. Over here, whoa, is the PB18 e-tron. So whilst we've got the obviously more conventional looking e-tron over there, this is well, potentially what the future of a performance e-tron could look like. And it looks rather good. Where to next? Um, perhaps Skoda my chariot. I'm sure you knew that I would chewhorn a rally car into this roundup somewhere and this is the Skoda R5 which is currently what's well, really the R5 car of choice it's leading the WRC2 championship. The reason I mention it is because well Skoda's got ooh, quite a, an RS theme, very sporty theme to its, its stand and starting with this the Kodiak VRS and it's putting out what is it 247, 237 brake horsepower, 500 newton meters with 369 pounds foot of torque, all from a diesel engine, two litre bi turbo diesel engine. And they lapped it around the Nurburgring, Sabine Schmidt, in nine minutes and 29 seconds, making it the fastest seven seater round the Nurburgring, a title which I really could not care less about. That's the sort of Nurburgring record that I just don't want to see broken. Anyway, Final thing on the Skoda stand is just over here, and this is the Vision RS concept. Now, it is just a concept, it's doing two things really. It is, well, showing the RS styling of the future perhaps, and also showing that they're gonna, well, the sort of car they're gonna replace the Rapid with. The Rapid, in case you know, is a car that Skoda actually currently produces. Nobody really knows about it. But this is gonna be sort of more golf-sized, as you can see, and I think it's very, very good looking car. Probably one of the best looking cars in the entire show. So I hope they build it. Uh, what next? The big reveal on the BMW stand at this show was the new 3 Series, and we've done a separate film on that, so go and have a look at that. But also here is the new Z4, which I haven't seen before. We looked for concept, but not the actual thing. The interior, first thing to say, is, is very similar to the new 3 Series. So we've got their sort of version of Audi's virtual cockpit in there and the start button down here all that sort of thing it feels well it's a nice low driving position the whole car overall is it's about 85 millimeters longer about 73 millimeters wider so it's, it's quite a big car which is i suppose a little bit of a shame i was hoping for something smaller and more compact however um i've heard good things about this and it being a proper boxer rival it's only going to come in in soft top version because it's been developed obviously the supra is going to be the hard top version of this chassis but yeah Z4. We've got two four-cylinder engines, one straight-six engine, which will be the top of the range M40i version. Uh, about four and a half seconds to 62 miles an hour. Let's hope it's good. Mercedes is a brand that's actually decided to release quite a lot at the Paris Motor Show this year. We've got the GLE and the B-Class just here, and we've already done a film on the A35 AMG. Probably less said about these two. The better I'm sure we can find information about it somewhere however there is also a concept just over here now this was actually first shown at Pebble Beach earlier this year but it's the first time you know the great unwashed public have actually been able to see the car and it's it's very very cool this is the Vision EQ Silver Arrow now it's a sort of an homage to the W125 record Wagen from 1937 so we're just a year out from that 80th anniversary and that car, in case you don't know, is powered by supercharged V12 and it set the record for a car on the road in terms of the speed record, 268 miles an hour, which was only beaten last year by Koenigsegg Agera RS, which is pretty extraordinary. I mean, this is beautiful though. I mean, it, very slippery, obviously, carbon fiber bodywork. Uh, that original car had 725 brake horsepower. This has 738 brake horsepower from its, obviously, electric power plants with 80 kilowatt hours underneath that skin it's just lovely it's sort of a, a halo concept car for the eq brand 
and I hope they rather build them. We've seen the Ferrari SP1 and SP2 elsewhere, which you can imagine in a few years' time, perhaps this would be that sort of thing. There we go. Anyway, um, I think we need to go into another hall now. We've got three different halls here, so I need my scooter, which is somewhere around here. Where did I leave it? Oh, yes, I need B200D. A particular highlight of the show, I'd say. On the Hyundai stand at the Paris Motor Show, well, we have this. Now, the i30N is one of our favourite current hot hatches, and this is the fastback version, rather confusingly called the i30 fastback N. It should be the i30 N. Anyway, looks pretty good. It's only come to the UK in the N performance version, which means 273 brake horsepower and you get that limited diff at the front and things like that. And it's a very good car to drive in hatchback version, so yeah, no reason not to like that. They have got a hatchback, and it's this. This is the i30N option. Now, they're not officially announcing this here, apparently, although they have got a car here, and it is a motor show, so I don't see what's not official about it. I suppose they haven't released any prices, but yeah, this is the sort of thing normally you'd have to go to an aftermarket tuner to get. We've got, look at this size of this wing, it's enormous. And all these extra bits, like this diffuser down here, the skirts down there. We've got larger 20-inch wheels, big old brakes in there, and we've got a Trofeo R tyre on here. So this is, this is serious upgrades. I mean, there's it's not a lot of room there, so there might be some suspension tweaks under there as well. Who knows? They haven't announced anything to do with the engine. Move down here, quick butchers inside. In here we've got, uh, well, we've got these very nice bucket seats made by Sebelt. A uh, bit of carbon fibre here, some Alcantara here, and on the wheel, new gear knob. It really lifts the interior, which before was perhaps just, well, a little bit humdrum. So yeah, hopefully they're going to actually release this because it looks like a, a miniature touring car. It's ace. Slightly curiously tucked away at the back of hall one is this, the Bugatti Devo which, you know, for a four and a half million pound car that hasn't been seen in public before seems slightly curious. Anyway, this is it. It looks better in the, the carbon fibre than I perhaps imagined. It's still not as beautiful as the Chiron. It's, it's more purposeful and striking, I think. Overall, downforce is increased by 90 kilos. The rear wing's 23% bigger. There's no more power in it, but weighs 35 kilos less, which is not really much when it weighs two tonnes overall anyway. But it is eight seconds quicker round the handling circuit at Nardo pulling up to 1.6 lateral G. There we are. Charlie said I should sit in the back of the chimney because he thought it would be funny because obviously I don't fit in here and there's no luggage space for the seats up. But otherwise, I really rather like the chimney. It starts at about £13,500 and it looks like a mini G-Class or probably the new Defender. It's, yeah, cheap but very cheerful. I like it. On the Renault stand, well, there's a concept over there that we'll never see again, and to be honest, it's far too futuristic for me. But this is the Megane Trophy. Now, it was announced a while ago, but uh, this is the first time we've actually seen it. Figures, well, 296 brake horsepower, 310 pounds foot of dock. As long as you have this flappy paddle gearbox, if you have the manual, then it's only 295 pounds foot of torque. The um, suspension is much stiffer, 10% stiffer anti-roll bars, 30% uh, stiffer shock absorbers, 25% stiffer springs. I think I've got that the right way around. And yeah, the big thing for me though is in here, the other thing, the seat mounted 20 millimeters lower, which is not, I think, an easy fix as far as I know because they have to homologate all sorts of things, but makes a big difference to the way this car feels here. Oh, also wheels. At the moment this one's wearing some Bridgestone and S001s but it's also going to be offered with some Fuji 19 inch wheels which are two kilos lighter uh, so eight kilos overall. Uh, obviously unsprung mass that helps and they're going to be wrapped in sportier Bridgestone S007 tyres presumably for Jacques Bond. Anyway probably can't wait to drive this. It should be very very good indeed. Ah damn it I did get it wrong. 25% firmer shock absorbers, 30% firmer springs, 10% differential roll bars. It's quite firm already, they've been cut, so it could be interesting. Rattly fillings. <sighs> Can't believe I got it wrong. So there we are. That is the end of our roundup. And I think it's worth saying that there has been an awful lot of, well, empty carpet at this Paris Motor Show 2018, which is a little bit worrying. VW pulled out. 
Ford weren't here either, so you ended up with quite a lot of, lot of hall space. Hopefully Frankfurt next year, you'll have VW back or German manufacturers will support their home event, just as the French manufacturers still supported this event. But does it sound the death knell for the most show overall? I hope not, and I think manufacturers really need to support it because even if they don't see the value, it sends out the wrong sort of message if most shows don't exist anymore. That's what I think anyway. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you think we've missed anything out, then by all means let us know, but also check out these standalone videos that we've also done. I've certainly enjoyed it. There's still been some fun stuff here. Until next year. Don't forget another one of those. That was great fun. <laughs>